In total, I'm counting Sanford. Some of them were not even close. And they, that's the difference. They were blowouts. We got a lot more coming. His fantastic play overshadowed by his not-so-stellar antics. What we should think about Johnny Manziel and his Kevin Sumlin close to losing his football team. Clemson with a momentous win Saturday night against Georgia. How much of a national player do we now think the Tigers really are? Who impressed us the most? We'll tell you the five most impressive in our minds. That's right, who made statements, maybe unexpected statements in week number one. And Devin Gardner, Michigan starting quarterback, joins us to talk about Saturday's showdown with Notre Dame. It is College Football Daily cruising along. Paul Feinbaum, Dory Noka, Jason Seahorn along in a bit. Charles Arbuckle along. Fine bum. I mean Bob. My new top five in just a few minutes. Also Heisman talk. Also Johnny Manziel. Ooh, now, you guys have never seen this dude before. In, in For a guy who wears glasses, Johnny balding, uh, he's really, pretty, you know, really, really good, right? He's got some, uh, Six for eight how do you call it? Touchdowns, uh, Better than George Costanza confidence. Performance. And then the trash talk. And then was this. And even though the person he did this to tweeted out that it wasn't, he wasn't bashing him or trash talking him, this, just not smart, Johnny. You realize how long you've given your team angst and caused angst because of actions that you've, that you've been a part of. What was your reaction when you watched him Saturday? To me, it was a, a, he, a missed opportunity. We could have been yeah. sitting here today all weekend long saying, Johnny Manziel looked good. Yeah. He came back from this uh, suspension, half-game suspension, but he can't do well. He can't live with success. He, he has to be the bad boy. He has to have punk behavior. And, and, and I'm, I, it's disappointing, but it's who he is. And I think it's who he's always been. So I don't know why we're all surprised. There's a, you know, and, and he plays with, you know, great ego. And I think that's what makes him sure, great, right? right? His ego is enormous. It's bigger than this room. And that makes him great. But there comes to be a point where, and all this stuff, whatever, I get it. I, not really. I couldn't do it. But Nobody he's going to do what he's going to do. But it's 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 walking past his coach. It's the disrespect that he does show the other team, as well as the disrespect that he shows his coach. The only guy that's really had his neck though the whole time through all this. Kevin Sumlin deserves better, and we'll talk about this a little bit later in a, in a roundtable setting, but I'm a little concerned Kevin Sumlin's going to lose this football team. Well, Kevin Sumlin made a deal with the devil. He, he let Johnny slide last year. He let him slide during the offseason, and now he's stuck with it. Uh, yeah, I like him. Everyone likes Kevin Sumlin. He's a, he's a great coach, but uh, he's made a bet, and now he's going to have to let him. He's in a difficult situation. I, can't, I don't know that there's a coach in the country that would want to switch places with him. Well, I think in Kevin Sumlin's mind, he has to survive September 14th. That's what this is all about. He gets pa If he gets past Alabama, not that he can do anything about it. He's stuck with Johnny Manziel. Of course, everyone would like to be stuck with Johnny Manziel as the quarterback. But maybe then he can. Anyone who's ever played the game, not that I have, um, knows that, that that's, a, that's taboo. That's verboten. Right, let's get to Alabama. Number one team in the country. Christian Jones, three touchdowns in total. Defense looked really good, as we figured they would. Logan Thomas. Lowest QBR in the country, 5 for 26. He was awful. Alabama fans, though, we know this, are going to worry about the offense, and I would, too, if I was them. It was inconsistent. It never really got going. What do you take away from Alabama? Well, I think it was a lackluster disappointment. They didn't look prepared. It looks like they, they've been getting ready for A&M yeah. since last year. And the biggest problem is the offensive line. I mean, that's been pointed out ad nauseum. Uh, and, and stuff like that you don't see very often with A.J. McCarron. But thank goodness for Christian Jones. He was able to give Alabama a cushion. But at the end of the day, I think Alabama is going to be okay. Uh, that's not too much faith in Nick Saban. That's just knowing the talent on that team and talent we really didn't see play very well on Saturday night. Yeah, we talk a lot about McCarron, Yeldon, Amari Cooper on offense, but then you've got this other weapon that just kind of came out of nowhere. Not nowhere, but he's a junior, Christian Jones. But what he did, highlight real plays, right? Great eight-type plays, Paul Feinbaum, to promote another show on ESPNU. Punt return, kick return, receiving touchdown, first player in college football to do that since 2002. Just another reason to worry. But again, without protection up front, 
Alabama's not nearly as dangerous as they've been in years past offensively. Now, during the game, Joe Namath, of all people, tweeted out, our offensive line is getting beaten, and when Quan Joe gets called twice for holding, you know you have a problem. But we got used to it last year, but I think that's something you can work on in the two weeks. And I think deep down, Nick Saban is going, you know what, I like this. I can get in there and just yeah. take their heads off and get their attention. And, and it's, it's really fortunate Alabama has an off week. Some people didn't like that, but now it works perfectly there. Sing it on and on and on and on and on. The beat don't stop until the break of dawn. I sing it on and on and on and on and on like a hot butter to pop, 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 to pop,